Hello, this is CJ. And after several trials and after actually several videos, um, I figure out ko ano yung gusto ko talagang gawin. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like uh, siguro wake up call din yung ano yung bad comment na na receive ko sa isa sa mga videos ko. And so, starting with this video, I'm going to um go back to my original approach when it comes to making them, and that is the most natural approach. No more pretense. And feeling ko actually parang ang hirap din na ano na isipin na parang you know napaka fake nung just I'm just talking straight tapos alam mo yun wala naman kaya tang nagagets if you're following through with my ano with my videos well number one, thank you pero number two is I hope na kahit pa paano meron naman kayo nakuha doon I was just like you know talking uh, pero ngayon I'm just going to be as natural as I can be so right from where I am from where I am right now I am inside my room and it's August 13 it's uh, 10 36 in the evening okay and then this video we are okay ang haba ng intro ko, no? Kasi nga, natural. So, um, in this video, we are going to talk about the biotechnology biotechnology and the ecosystem. So, didiscuss natin dito yung importance ng biotechnology sa iba't ibang klase ng mga ecosystems. Okay, so, let's begin with the marine ecosystem. Okay, so, so under under marine ecosystem, uh, meron siyang mga sub, ano, mga subtopics. So, the first one is uh, aquaculture and fisheries. So, first, let me just uh, talk muna, the usual, pero um, I'm still going to give you some explanations in between. So, yeah, with regards to aquaculture and fisheries, una natin pag-usapan is reproduction. Okay, so... Uh, reproduction. Several fishes, they do not spawn spontaneously when placed under captive conditions. Kapag um, nahuli na sila, um, they're not like um, spontaneously spawn, I mean spawning or nanganganak. Or they're not multi multiplying spontaneously. Di sila gaanong dumarami. In the past, uh, fish gonadotropin, gonadotropin. Uh, it is a group of hormones na nag stimulate ng reproduction. They were produced in own, in small amounts by extraction and purification mula sa mga crude preparations of uh, thousands of different pituitary glands. Uh, at present, large quantities of highly purified gonadotropin had, can be produced in the laboratory through recombinant DNA technology. So, ayun, yung gonadotropin kasi, it is a hormone. Siya yung nagpapa, ano, nag stimulate ng reproduction among fish. Eh, dati, hindi naman kasi siya talaga yung hormone na napaproduce in many amounts. Okay, so, ginawa ngayon ng DNA, recombinant DNA technology is, uh, phoenix niya yun by, um, um, stimulating the production of gonadotropin among fish. Para nga naman mas uh, dumami sila, mas mabilis silang mag-reproduce. So, ayun yung effect ng ano, importance ng biotechnology. Nagawang very good ng biotechnology sa reproduction. So, isa yun. Isang example yon Yung pag-edit uh, ng gonadotropin hormone uh, expression. Yun. So, yeah. Puti kang inet. <laughs> okay, so next one is uh, hermab hermaphroditism. Hermaphrodite, yung mga, yung yun, di ba? We all know what this means. It is uh, the, ano, the, um, uh, hem a hermaphrodite is an organism na meron siyang in-express ng mga characteristics ng male at saka ng female. So, hermaphroditism, it is a common phenomenon in many coral reef fish, fishes. Fishes kasi siguro, iba-ibang iba klaseng fish. Now, some species are male in the early stages in their life cycle, tapos nababakla sila. <laughs> they turn into females, okay, in the later stages. Parang yung ibang mga kilala ko. <laughs> Kakilala ko. <laughs> okay. So, in that way, nagiging hermaphrodite sila. Kapag halimbawa, naging... I mean, uh, kapag hindi ba pinanganak silang lalaki tapos uh, naging babae sila later in their lives, uh, ang tawag doon is protandrus hermaphrodite. Okay, ganun yung tawag sa organism na yon. Tapos kapag baliktad naman, pinanganak na babae, naging, naging lalaki, natomboy, parang ganun. Okay, ang tawag doon is protogenus hermaphrodite. 
Ayan. So, it is necessary to have both sexes in the brood stock always. So, through genetic engineering, yung sex ng mga species, pwede siyang ma-regulate as it reaches maturity. Na-edit din yun, ng, na-enhance din ng uh, DNA technology, ng recombinant DNA technology, yung ganyan. Okay, so first is finifix niya yung pag-release ng gonadotropin, mas pinapa-express niya. Pangalawa naman is yung herma- hermaproditism, it is being assumed by, ano, by genetic engineering. Kaya ginagawa na niya ng paraan na ma-maintain yung dami ng mga males and females sa stock. Okay, so that is for reproduction. Dito naman ako na-stress kagabi kasi uh, that was August 12. Uh, alas just din yata yun. I was trying to ano to record this kaso pagod na pagod na ako. Tapos sumabay pa to. What, nawala to. So I, I I was sure na ginawa ako na tong part na to ng ano, itong graphics na to pero hindi siya lumitao. Okay, so yeah, andyan na siya. So um, the next, okay, first to reproduction. Pangalawa niyan is nutrition. Okay, so nutrition, think about food, let's think about uh, health na through ano through diet yon so nutrition so trash fish or wild fish species for fish meals as protein source for aquafeeds are very limited okay, so let, let me repeat that yung mga wild fish fish species uh, para sa paggawa ng fish meal okay yung pagkain ng mga fish mismo so yeah fish din ang kinakain ng fish Okay, uh, as a protein source for aquafeeds, it's uh, very limited. Understandable, kasi syempre, yung source mo ba naman is a fish too. So, hindi naman only yung mga fish na pwedeng maging na, na prey, di ba? I mean, yeah, pinag-agawan pa nga sila dun sa isang, ano yun, Our Planet video na, na ano ko eh, napanood ko. It's by Netflix in YouTube. Nandun is pinag, ano, actually pinagtutulungan ng mga seals, ng mga, pa, may mga birds eh. Tapos meron ding mga, ano, mga sharks ba yun? Dolphins. Okay, so, syempre, medyo in nature, meron nga competition. Paano pa kaya kung agriculture niya? Syempre, um, feeding fish is one of the, ano, one of the most important things na kailangan gawin ng isang fisherman. <laughs> fisherman. Okay, so thus, plant-based protein sources are a sustainable option with additional advantage of being cheaper. Kaso, may mga plants na may mga anti-nutritional characteristics. Hindi sila, ano, hindi sila favorable. Hindi pwedeng gamitin yung plant na yun for feed utilization. Okay, say, say for instance, uh, carni- yung mga carnivorous fish fishes. Uh, they have limited ability to use up carbohydrates uh, due to the digestibility of polysaccharides. Um, mayaman sa protina yung mga fish talaga. Kung yung, I mean, okay, so let's, ano, yung fish, na kumakain ng fish, okay, um, protein, halos yung nakukuha niya. Okay, that's good. Okay, protein, protein source yung kinakain niyang fish. Eh, kaso nga, limited lang. So, sinusolusyon na nito ng plant-based uh, sources. Kaso, di ba, since plant-based, hindi naman mas maraming, usually, mas marami pa rin yung sugars, yung mga, yung mga carbohydrates niya. Eh, pro- yun yung, yung problema. May mga carnivorous fishes na limited lang yung kaya nilang carbohydrates na digest So, now, to address this concern, carbohydrate metabolism of salmonid fish was enhanced through genetic engineering. Um, I mean, kaya naman nila mag-digest, kaso hindi gaano, okay? So, yun ang ginawa ng genetic engineering. Para walang problema, eh di mas, ano, mas i-enhance natin yung pag, pag may metabolize ng carbohydrates sa mo, o, ng salmonid fish, di ba? O, eh di problem solved. And so, glucose transporters and hexokinase genes were transferred to the salmonid fish, fish oil. Ayan, so, ayan, uh, salmonid fish. So, this is the first uh, problem that was solved by genetic engineering in uh, terms of aqu- aquaculture and fisheries, specifically sa nutrition, uh, dun sa nutrition part sa diet. So, phoenix niya yung, ano, yung mahinang metabolism ng isang kind of fish. Um, sa pagpa-process ng, or sa me- pagmametabolize ng polysaccharides, ng mga carbohydrates. Ayan. So, Phoenix, ayan. that's the first one. Now, let's see the second one. Uh, fish oil is economically important in fish feed production. Okay? As well as to human health. The demand for fish or uh, for fish oil is continued to grow alongside the expansion of aquaculture industry because it is a major lipid source in aquafeeds. 
the aquaculture industry takes up to almost 90% of the global fish oil production. With this growing demand, it is necessary to have other sources of fish oil. So, ayun, sinasabi niya, fish oil, okay, um, napaka-importante na ito for uh, the production of feeds para sa mga fish and also for human diet kasi nga tayo rin, kailangan din natin ng fish oil. Okay. So with this growing demand, it is necessary to have other sources of fish oil. Rotham stud research scientists developed camelina oil seed plants, camelina oil seed plants that were genetically engineered to produce omega-3 fish oils in their seeds. So omega-3 fish oils are known to be beneficial components of human nutrition. So gen- genetically modified camelina has the potential to supply healthful fish oil even for human diet. So the second ano, the second thing that was uh, done by ano by genetic engineering uh, for aquaculture and fisheries and uh, specifically for nutrition is fish oil because it's important in the production of uh, fish feed at the same time kailangan din siya ng ano ng mga tao so yeah nakikihati pa tayo uh, so since ganun yung case we need to um, not just rely we need to we need to ano to lower the reliance to just fish for extracting fish oil so ang ginawa nila yung camelina oil uh, yung camelina that's a plant tama o oh. camelina um they genetically modified it para yung ano niya yung yung seed niya is going to produce an oil that is uh, fish oil omega 3 rich Ayun. So, that's the second one. Okay, so let's have a review. For nutrition, una niya is yung um, pag-enhance ng carbohydrate metabolism ng mga fish, ng mga carnivorous fish, para hindi sila, para mas, uh, para okay na yung, ano, para okay na yung reliance sila sa plant-based na feed. Okay, ma-minimize yung pressure para sa uh, fish-based na mga pagkain. Tapos, um, yung next one is, yun nga, yung fish oil. So, the genet- the gen- I mean, genetically modified na yung camelina para mag-produce siya ng fish oil na pwedeng gamitin for fish feed and even for human consumption. Ayan. So, the next one, aquaculture and fisheries pa rin. We have health management. So, let's uh, begin. Traditional disease diagnosis involves analysis of cells and tissues of organisms, which takes a long time to be done. Diagnostics, eh. Modern methods use polymerase chain reaction, um, a technique used in molecular biology to focus on a segment of the DNA, and then gagawa siya ng maraming copies dun sa segment na yun ng DNA in just a short period of time. So, through PCR, um, PCR enables the accurate identification of pathogens in marine organisms even without um, observing the visual symptoms ng mismong disease. Since marine organisms are capable of transboundary movement, it is vital to diagnose diseases accurately because of their implication to quarantine and trade. Man, the shrimp industry faces risk of losses due to several viral pathogens such as the white spot syndrome virus or WSSV, yellowhead virus, Tora syndrome virus, hepatopancreatic parvovirus, and baculoviruses. Okay, so scientists find it hard to devise treatment for viral diseases in crustaceans like shrimps because they do not possess true adaptive immune response system and they react to diseases by non-specific innate immune mechanism so it's difficult to develop any any you know, any way of helping uh, these um, creatures in surviving viral infections it's difficult kasi wala sila unlike tayo meron tayong mga definite na ano na um, immune responses, sila wala. Okay. So, identification and characterization of genes involved in the immune response in shrimp, shrimps are vital to comprehend host pathogen interactions. So, now, genes from the giant tiger prawns um, and Japanese tiger prawn, so meron giant, meron in Japanese, exhibited antiviral activity after being cloned and upregulated in WSSV-infected shrimp. So, yun. May mga genes daw, ang isang type of, ang dalawang types of prawn, yung giant tiger prawn at saka yung Japanese tiger prawn, na nagpakita ng antiviral activity 
matapos silang maklone at uh, ma-regulate dun sa mga infected na shrimp, okay? Virally infected na shrimp. Now, aside from the anti-antiviral agents, anti-aging, <laughs> antiviral agents, yung RNA interference or RNAi or gene silencing has also been used to control virus infection. Now, a short interfering RNA targeting a major envelope protein gene of WSSV was used to induce gene silencing in J in P. japokinus, yun yung, ano, yung Japanese tiger prawn. So this regulated, this resulted to a res- significant decrease of viral DNA production and lower mortality rates. Furthermore, after three injections of uh, the uh, inter- RNA interference, <laughs> okay, interfering, the virus interference interfering, <laughs> the virus was wiped out from the WSSV uh, infected shrimp. Okay, so now, ganito siya niyan. Um, una, uh, inemphasize. Ine-emphasize natin yung fact na since syempre nasa tubig sila, yung mga creatures, uh, yung mga marine creatures, they don't really, ano, they don't really have this boundary. They are, ano, they are, ano kasing word for that? Yeah, they are capable of transboundary movement. And because of that, napakahirap i-quarantine, napakahirap i-contain ng mga diseases. Eh, okay, hindi naman matitibay ang mga ano, ang mga ang mga ang lahat ng mga marine um, organisms. Halimbawa, yan, shrimp na wala napakahina nga. Ngayon, ang ginawa ng genetic ng ano, ng DNA te- ng di- recombinant DNA technology ba- pa rin ba to? Eh, pero ang ginawa ng biotechnology, okay? So that is the t- general term. Ang ginawa niya is that um in study niya yung mga similar species, mga shrimps pa rin, yung mga um, parang okay, prawn. Iba yun, di ba? <laughs> Iba yun, di ba? Okay, so in-study yung mga medyo, medyo lang. Okay, medyo similar na mga species, prawns. And then, at uh, pinag-aralan niya yung, mga, yung, ano, yung genetic material niya. And then they found out, they found some genes na nanggagaling sa mga prawn na pwedeng, ma- na nag-exhibit nga ng, ano, ng antiviral uh, properties. So, yun. So, since, syempre, ganun yung nakita mo sa prawn na medyo malapit sa shrimp. Uh, medyo siguro kamaganak. Kamaganak niya, di ba? I don't doubt that. So, ayun, ginamit nila yon para magkaroon ng uh, viral resistance ang mga shrimps. Ayan. Uh, aside from that din, uh, nag, ano rin, bale, nag-work din yung RNA interference or RNAi. So, yung gene silencing, yung pagpapatahimik ng mga genes. Okay? So, ginamit yon para ma-silence yung mga, para makontrol ang virus infection. Ayan. So because of these two, um mas na ma- mas na ma-manage ang health ng mga ano ng mga marine organisms and in this example ng mga prawn and ng mga shrimp. Sure. All right, so that's the first actually one. Next one. So next one is antimicrobial peptides. So AMPs, it is a potential alternative to antibiotics um, kasi nga antimicrobial tapos it's a potential alternative to antibiotics okay, for aquaculture because there is no resistance to AMPs that has been reported to date. AMPs or antimicrobial peptides are considered as major components in the innate immune defense system of marine organisms. Um, kasi they are exhibiting antimicrobial properties and they provide provide an immediate and fast action against invading organisms. Okay, example of AMPs in uh, found that in, that are found in uh, marine organisms. It includes um, penadines from shrimps, mitomycin from mussel, halosidin from sea peaches, and then ay, may sea peaches pala. Hello, excuse me. Tapos kalinectin from blue crab and then big defensin from trispine horseshoe crab and clavaspirin from club sea squirt. Okay, so vaccines. Uh, so first, ayun, so pangalawa, pangalawa muna. So after nung pag-alter ng shrimp, uh, yung, gene, yung genes niya pag-alter para mas maging matibay siya against uh, viral infections comes now. AMPs or antimicrobial peptides. Itong mga to, in-isolate lang sila, tapos uh, they found na it is a very, ano, very effective alternative 
uh, sa antibiotics na pwedeng gamitin sa aquaculture sa pagbe-breed ng mga mari- ng marine life. So instead of using antibiotics, um, now we can use antimicrobial peptides because they are as they are exhibiting antimicrobial properties which is like much like and ant- being the actions of antibiotics. Ayun. So that is a second uh, thing that we need to remember when it comes to aquaculture and to biotechnology is effect or uh, actually help in the field of aquaculture health management. Yeah. I know. Okay, next one. Uh, vaccines are another cost-effective means to protect fish from viral diseases and prevent spread of diseases. So fish vaccines have been considered as the key reason in the success of salmon industry. An example of a vaccine for salmon is known as Apex IHN, which confers resistance to hematopoietic necrosis virus, or IHNV. And so, ayun, the last one is a is a vaccine and self-explanatory. Biotechnological kasi talaga ang ano ang vaccine technology. So, uh, syempre, malalagay malalagay talaga siya dito, especially it's aquaculture kasi meron niya, yeah, merong bakuna para sa mga salmon. So remember, before we leave this, uh, the effects of ano, biotechnology, the positive effects of biotechnology to marine ecosystems, speci- specifically in aquaculture, health management are the following. First, it was able to strengthen a species like shrimp against uh, viral infections, given that they are so vulnerable kasi nga, uh, wala naman silang boundary, they're just in the water. Next one is AMPs or antimicrobial peptides. Um, pwede siyang gamitin as a substitute for antibiotics na pwede gamitin in breeding uh, marine life. And then the last one is vaccine na pwede gamitin uh, din for ano for protecting certain ano certain species from infection or yeah from diseases such as in the case of salmon. Ayun. So um, the last one is uh, for ano for this is uh, growth promotion. Okay, so growth promotion. So keep in mind the marine ecosystem. Ang unang pinag-usapan pa lang natin is aquaculture ha. So <laughs> meron pang next. Okay. So aquaculture growth promotion. So majority of the trend of transgenic research on commercially important fish species are focused on improving growth rates by transfer of growth hormones. Um, ang pinaka, ano, pinaka gust, ang pinaka gustong, actually, ang pinaka leading na trend sa research when it comes to the aquaculture is kung paano ba mas palalakihin <laughs> ang mga fish. Hmm, um, feeling ko, gets nyo naman, gets nyo na to kasi, Hindi lang naman sa fish eh. Even sa mga fruits, diba? Like, palakihan. Like, bigger is better. <laughs> diba may ganun? So, even sa mga fish may ganun. So, um, yun. Nangyari is, syempre, it will become a leading trend in research when it comes to aquaculture. Paano ba mas mapapalaki yung fish species? Para mas marami makakain. Again, for better yield then. So, this is economically sound because transgenic fish nga will, with altered growth traits will reach maturity in a shorter span of time than non-transgenic fish kasi usual lang yung growth ng mga yun. Kasi pareho lang. I mean, wala namang bago sa mga genes nila. Okay, and they exhibit better feed conversion efficacy um, yung mga transgenic fish. So, these advantages further translate to shorter production cycle, lower production costs, and reduced pollution in aquaculture facility. Diba? Win-win. Okay, so let me repeat that. Um, in this, ano, I mean, in this aspect, ang naitutulong ng biotechnology is napapalaki niya yung fish uh, ng mabilis. Sana all, di ba? Okay, so yun yung nagagawa niya. Ngayon, ano pa yung mga benefits? Ano ba yung benefits nun kapag mabilis lumaki yung fish? Okay, so first one, um, it it grows in a shorter uh, shorter span of time so hindi na may inip yung yung ano yung fish fisher <laughs> yung may ari sa kanya or hindi na tayo may inip sa paghihintay because it's going to grow faster okay that's the first one second one is um yung production cycle mas maikli Okay, so, hin- um, halimbawa, in a year, pwede sila makapag-produce ng, maka- makagawa ng ilang cycles kumpara dun sa dating cycle 
nila na siguro konti lang or mas I mean sigurado darami yung production cycle. Okay, so next to and the third one is uh, okay, so the first one is shorter span of time for growth. Second one is a shorter production cycle and then third one lower production costs. Syempre. Um yung lahat na mga kailangan mong gastusin para lang palakihin yan, if it's the usual fish, medyo mas malaki yun kumpara dun sa gagastusin mo kung genetically modified na yung mismong isda. Okay, so, lower yung cost, uh, yung, ano, yung cost, uh, yung production cost mo. And then the last one, the fourth one, is it reduces the pollution in aquaculture facilities. Um, syempre, if you are going to just constantly pour in some feeds, pour in some more, I don't know, enhancers, what are they doing ba, pa to improve uh, fish yield? Okay, so whatever they're doing, if it may cause some pollution, then uh, some levels of pollution, then that is going to be reduced kasi mas mabilis na yung cycle. So, ano, so mas, um, makaka, makaka, ano, mas, makaka, mas konti, mas konti yung, chemicals and ibang mga bagay na kailangan gamitin, better. Am I making sense? Okay, so, ayun. So, those are the four advantages. Next one. In 2015, an example. So, aqua-advantaged salmon with growth hormone gene from Chinook salmon became the first genetically engineered fish approved for commercial use after it was proven to be safe to eat like a uh, non-GE uh, Atlantic salmon. Um, by the U- by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, it was also approved for commercial use in Canada in 2016. And who knows? Takakain ka na ganyan. <laughs> diba? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sniffing. Okay, so we're now done with aquaculture. So in the marine ecosystem, the first... Uh, the first set of benefits na nagawa ng biotechnology is in the field of aquaculture. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, medicine. I know medyo, ano, medyo pareho lang to dun sa kanina. Pero let's give it a try. Malay nyo, may makita tayong difference. So, for medicine, over 2,000 years ago, extracts from marine uh, organisms were used as medicine. In the 19th century and 20th century, cod liver oil is one of the famous uh, nutritional supplements. It was only in the middle of the 20th century when scientists started to systematically navigate the oceans for medicines. Now, when scientists were studying the defense mechanisms of sea creatures, they discovered nila na napaka vast ng chemical weapons, defensive chemical weapons ng mga marine organisms. Ngayon, in the 1950s, Ross Negrelli from New York Zoological Society extracted the toxin na tinatawag na holothurin from a Bahamian sea cucumber. Okay, so which it showed anti-tumor activity nung nilagay siya sa mice, uh, sa, sa daga. So, ayun. Ang point niyan is ganito. Sa field ng medicine, so hindi na to medicine na para lang sa ano, para lang sa fish. Pero kanina, na-mention natin na yung fish oil, since it's rich in omega-3, it is also important for human health. Okay, so yeah. Pero this part, for medicine, we are going to talk about ang paano ba nagagawa ng, ano, paano ba na natin nagagamit ang marine, ang mga resources from marine ecosystems um, through biotechnology and specifically in treating diseases. Ano kaya ang pwede natin gamitin from marine resources na mga bagay-bagay para makagawa tayo ng medicines. Ayun. And it's, uh, na, ang kinagamit natin sa biotechnology. So the first one, is uh, this example. So, yung ang Bahamian sea cucumber, meron siyang toxin na tinatawag na holothurin, holothurin, na meron mga anti-tumor activities. Okay. Kaso na, ano yun, na discovery sa mice. Kaso nga, okay, since mice yun, syempre, kailangan mo na talagang ma, ano, ma- confirm kung it will work on, on, on humans. Uh, hindi siya na, hindi siya na, hindi siya work <laughs> Kasi hindi siya na-commercialized. But there are a number of potential bioactive compounds from the ocean that spiked up and more are being discovered each year, actually. So, scientists have used biotechnology to make copies of marine compounds in the laboratory so they don't have 
to be constantly harvested from marine life. Now, some have been commercialized while others are undergoing clinical or preclinical trial tests. The other ones, man, such as holothorin, hindi sila na commercialized. You know, if you have been, ano, if you have, if you did research, baka gets mo na rin kung bakit di siya na-commercialize. Ba, baka dangerous. Ayun. So, some marine-derived drugs are still in clinical trials. So, these include cytotoxic compounds, bryostatin-1, and the dolastatin derivative sublidotin, and synthadotin. So, aside from these drugs, more products are in the preclinical pipeline. So, the number of marine compounds reported is increasing every year annually with over 1,000 new compounds with varied potencies and biological functions added to the pipeline each year. Marami. Marami daw tayong mga iba pang pwedeng gamitin. Tapos, meron na rin yung mga tinatest na mga compounds na galing din sa marine ecosystems. Kaso talaga yung halotrin, hindi talaga siya pwedeng gamitin. So, yeah, hindi siya commercialized. Okay, next one, environment. So, in what way are is biotechnology uh, important for marine ecosystem and the environment? So, uh, degradation of environmental pollutants, yung pag yung pag uh, degrade or paano ba yun? Hindi kasi siya pag consume, basa degrade. If you get degrade, okay. <laughs> Yung nade-degrade ka, gano'n. Okay, so, yung pag-degrade ng mga environmental pollutants, napaka-importante nun, okay? Napaka-importante nun, hindi lang para sa isang bansa, kundi para sa lahat ng mga bansa in the entire world. Yung mga nakaka-pollute sa, ano, sa paligid natin, napaka-importante na pag-isipan kung paano ba natin, paano ba sila mawawala? Kasi di naman pwedeng uh, stock lang tayo ng stock ng mga pollutants, eh, you know. Kung maubos na tayo ng mga landfill, anong gagawin natin? So, it's important na meron tayong way of degrading them na hindi lang susunugin. <laughs> Kasi ano rin yun, that's also not good for the environment. That's why various technologies are, you know, are uh, being applied para yung mga ibang mga some types of, ano, of pollutants are going to be degraded now. Um, studies have shown that marine microorganisms exhibit unique biodegradation pathways for breaking down several organic pollutants. Now, some immobilized cells of bacterium pseudomonas chlorophyllus produce pioverdin. Okay, let me let me give you let me give it an emphasis. Pioverdin. Okay, so pioverdin it hastens the breakdown of toxic organotin compounds in seawater. Now, other studies have also shown that some marine organisms produce eco-friendly chemicals like biopolymers and biosurfactants, which can be used in environmental waste management and treatment. So, the point of, uh, no, the point of this part is that through biotechnology, we are discovering some um, compounds and some chemicals from um, marine ecosystems that can actually help us um, digest or degrade certain environmental pollutants. Okay, para mabawas yung mga, yung mga basura sa paligid natin, meron pala tayong pwedeng gamitin from marine ecosystems na mga bagay, mga chemicals na pwede rin makuha by doing biotechnological uh, procedures. And sure. So examples of them are, uh, it's an immobilized cell from bacterium pseudomonas, yung pioverdin nagpapabilis nga ng ano ng degradation ng isang toxic substance in the water pangalawa naman is may mga marine organisms na nagpo-produce ng eco-friendly chemicals tulad ng mga biopolymers at saka mga biosurfactants na pwedeng gamitin sa environmental waste management and treatment ayan so ayun that is its importance ay that is how it affects the environment Next one is biofuel. Okay, so um, this is actually a leading, uh, no, a leading reason. Because when we talk about fuel, we're also talking about energy. <laughs> energy, ang pinag-usapan natin dyan, mga chong. So, hindi naman kasi, ano, like, we are, we are relying on non-renewable energy sources, and that's bad. Kasi, um, kung yun lang, dun lang talaga ang reliance natin, um, 
wala, maubos na, maubos na talaga tayo ng energy source. So, we need to do everything in our power to make sure na meron tayong mga makukuha na iba. And now, biotechnology um, is discovering something in marine ecosystems that can uh, actually help um, lessen the pressure to non-renewable energy resources like coal. So yeah, biofuels from microalgae is one of the economically viable ways to reduce fossil fuel consumption. Microalgae are considered better sources of biofuels than higher plants because of their high oil content. Uh, so they have um, in themselves high oil content and then they are easy to propagate. It's very easy to propagate them. They can be cultivated in seawater or brackish water. Thus, do not compete with the resources of conventional agriculture. Carry lang. Okay, kahit ipropagate mo sila sa, ano, sa water by themselves, they can do it. Okay. And then, uh, residual biomass after oil extraction. Yung, bawa, na-extract mo na yung oil. Yung biomass na matitira, it can be used as feed or fertilizer or fermented, uh, or it can be fermented to produce ethanol or methane. And the biochemical composition can be controlled by modifying growth conditions. So microalgae with superior biomass productivity and lipid content include chlorella, tetracelmis, uh, chetoceros, isochrysis, Skeletonema and nanochloropsis. So again, let's let's uh, no, let's uh, dwell on this. A microalgae, okay, a microalgae, um, they are they they can help us in actually they can supply us with biofuel, okay, um, energy. Now, in what way is that beneficial for us? So. We have the following uh, ways. The first one, it they have a really high oil content. Number one, they have a really high oil content. Number two, they are easy to propagate. These marine uh, organisms, they are really easy to propagate. Number three, um, yung waste material, yung residue after na extracting oil from them, Pwede pa yung gamitin for feed, fertilizer, and even fermented into alcohol. That's the third one. The fourth one is that um, you can, uh, we can, we can control the biochemical composition of it through biotechnological techniques. Okay, so, ayun. Okay, so uh, it was, we have 37, we have had 37 minutes already. Hi, right, so now let's talk about, let's move on to terrestrial ecosystem. Ito lang, ito yung last type of ecosystem. So I chose marine and terrestrial kasi sila lang naman yung parang general types of ecosystems that are there. So yeah, let's start. So let's talk about the um, biotechnolo- biotechnology in plants. Okay, paano naging importante ang biotechnology para sa plants uh, on, mar- on terrestrial ecosystems? Ayan. So first, plant tissue culture is a general term used for different techniques such as cells culture, seeds tissue culture, anther and pollen culture, plant organ culture, and tissue culture. So lahat na mga yun, uh, it's plant tissue culture. Okay. So uh, they have important roles in biodiversity con- conservation. Okay. So first role ng bi- <laughs> sorry. Yung unang role ng biotechnology in improving um, plants, plant life among terrestrial ecosystems is, number one, for vegetative multiplication of many species para mas maparami ang plants. Second one, it allows the production of large numbers of plants from small pieces of the stock plant in relatively short periods of time. So, self-explanatory. <laughs> Next one, it is for the recovery of virus-free plants. Yeah, yung... Just like us, um, even animals actually. Lahat naman mga mabuhay, they have the tendency to have infections. So, may mga plants, syempre, may mga plants, they have these types of viruses too na kapag na-infect sila, it's going to affect their health. So, biotechnology helps plants um, recover their previous uh, version. So, halimbawa, 
yung generation of these plants now are really ano they are uh, already infected by different types of virus or they are they because of viruses na altering genes nila and thus they are becoming uh, less efficient or you know worse a worse generation then through biotechnology we can remake plants okay into their virus free versions next one for the production of somatic hybrids organelle and cytoplasm transfer and germplasm storage through freeze preservation or cryo preservation okay so the second importance is in in saving natural habitats from industrial processes so the single most promising way para ma-avoid natin yung habitat production is by increasing farm yields in a process that has been called the second green revolution. So several components will be required to increase productivity. Yung pinakauna is better training and education ng mga farmers, uh, usually pati dapat women, and then a uh, more favorable economic and political climate dapat meron ding available na microcredits para kanino pupunta tong ganito, ganun, allocation. And in addition, technical contributions kailangan din. So, isa sa mga contributions na technical is pag improve ng mga buto. So, uh, it, it can be produced either by traditional crop breeding, which is tedious, or by modern biotechnology, which is actually very more more efficient, time-wise, tsaka resources-wise. So there will be there will have to be more reliance on the latter kasi uh, traditional breeding it seems to have reached a yield plateau so, uh, whereas yung modern technology hindi naman so agricultural biotechnology which is viewed as controversially uh, viewed controversially in the public debate may contribute markedly to conserve biodiversity by preventing the appropriation of native biodiversity rich land for farming purposes. Ngayon, ganito siya niyan. Ang point ng pang, ang pangalawang point natin diyan is this. Ay, what's the first point? Um, ang importance nito sa plants is that um, mas napaparami ang plants uh, efficiently. Second one. Um, yung mga natural habitats kasi ng mga animals is hindi naman ibig sabihin is green kaagad, ganun. I mean, Okay, just think of a think of a kapatagan. I mean, uh, taniman ng palay. Hindi 'yon ang natural habitat. Okay? Kasi we um turned that land from how it was into how it is now. We changed it. Uh, if there if there were animals living in that area before, they can't really live in there now because it's just full of, ano, it's just full of palay and, you know, who would even let animals near their tanim, right? So, ayun, gets, gets. So, yeah, because we are converting, we are converting um, places, we are converting places, yung mga wild uh, places, yung mga tinubuan na lang talaga ng puno, ng mga damo, we are converting them into farms na destroy natin yung natural habitats ng mga ano ng mga animals. Now, um, because of ano, because of biotechnology, ang, ang, ang nagagawa natin is um instead of just um produ- I mean instead of increasing our yield, increasing our yield para mas para mapakain natin ang population natin kasi de ba there's also pressure in there. Instead of just increasing our yield by increasing the number of farms, we are just in, we are just improving the kind of plant we are planting, and we are doing that by improving the seeds. Kapag na improve na yung seeds, na parami natin yung yield, mapapakain natin pa rin ang population natin, yung growing population natin, without increasing the number of farmlands. Gets. Okay, let me rephrase that, okay? So, in saving natural habitats from industrial processes, ganito yan. Our population needs to be fed. Kailangan nating makakain. Ngayon, um, nag-grow ang population natin, ibig sabihin nun, mas ma- lumalaki yung demand natin para sa pagkain. Tama? Since lumalaki yung demand natin sa para sa pagkain, 
dapat magdagdag din tayo ng mga forms. Tama. Kapag nagdagdag tayo ng forms, naapektuhan yung natural habitats ng mga ibang animals and even plants. Tama. Ngayon, to avoid that, okay, to avoid that negative consequence, we can just uh, improve the kind of seed para hindi na natin kailangan magdagdag pa ng farmlands. Yung usual na number lang ng farmlands. Kaso, this time, yung itatanim mismo, it's a better version. Ayun. Okay, so, next one. Uh, actually, this is the last one. The last one is on conserving species. So, paano kaya nagagawa ng, ano, ng biotechnology na ma-conserve yung species? Okay? Ma-conserve ang species na mga ano, plants and animals. Okay, so the con- uh, let's have an example. So, the conservation of native plants and animals and uh, specifically birds in farmed areas are it's it's really important okay so the the birds habitats are the fields the hedges the roadsides and fallow land where they depend for food on insects and seeds produced by weeds in or near the crops again ang mga birds in natural habitat nila is yung mga fields hedges roadsides chama fallow land Okay, doon nakukuha nila, kaya sila na doon nakatira kasi doon nila nakukuha yung food nila such as insects at saka mga seeds na galing sa mga damo. Okay, ngayon, these seeds are particularly important in the winter months. Computer models na dinevelop ni ng certain person called Watkinson suggest that a more intense weed control measure may lead to smaller amount of seeds being available to birds. Now, this effect seems plausible under certain conditions but depends on weed management regimes rather than on the presence of or absence of transgenic plants. Therefore, it is not a, an issue of biotechnology actually. Now, herbicide tolerant beets may allow farmers to tolerate weeds for a longer time and fight them only after sowing. This is made possible uh, by a post-emergence herbicide treatment. Okay, so more efficient weed management may also make it possible to set aside more land. If the lack of food results in the reduction of the, in the bird population, this may lead to an increased number of harmful insects in the fields, which is actually true. It must be remembered that farming the land serves quite different purposes, particularly in the northern Europe. The primary goal is obviously to the production of food, but secondary goals, such as conservation of biodiversity and giving city dwellers opportunities for outdoor activities, are also important. Now, and let's uh, and let us try to summarize. Paano nangyayari yung conservation of species here? Basically, it's a story of um, of the food chain. Okay. Okay, ganito. Sa farms, ang kailangan mag-survive is yung tinanim. Kung merong mga weeds, kailangang patayin. Right? Ngayon, if farmers are going to have um, plants that are uh, herbicide resistant, yung mga plants na yun, kaya pa nilang itolerate yung mga, okay, kaya pa nilang itolerate yung mga weeds that are growing around them until such time na pwede nang i-apply yung herbicide. Ah, you get, I mean, um, do you get what I mean? It's much like this. If farmers are going to plant the usual type of crops na kailangan talagang tinatang I mean tanggalan pa talaga ng ano na I mean hindi pwedeng gamitan ng herbicide kasi mamamatay din sila and thus hindi rin sila pwedeng makapag mag, I mean hindi rin nila kayang i-tolerate yung mga weeds that are growing around them kung ganoong plants ang itatan, itatanim ng mga farmers then, kailangan nila talagang patayin yung mga weeds that are growing around them from, I mean, from time to time. And that is going to result 
to uh, smaller seed sources para sa mga birds. Tama. <laughs> I hope you're getting me. Okay, so since the um, genetically modified crops that are planted can uh, bear with the number of weeds that are growing around them and they can combat the herbicide that is soon going to be ano, going to be applied to, onto them with the weeds um okay lang na maggrow mo na yung weeds for now at least in that way nakoconserve din yung species ng mga birds na nagdedepend sa kanila Okay, I hope that makes sense. Kasi, if halimbawa, puro tayo gamit ng herbicides, ganun, herbicide tayo ng herbicide, like, uh, ganun, um, just to control weeds, then ang ginagawa lang natin actually is we are just harming the species of birds that are depending on these. And because the, the birds are harmed, um, there is a higher possibility that uh, a greater amount of insects may emerge in that farm. Kasi ba diba, ang diet ng mga birds is seeds and insects. So, ayun. It's solving. So, it's actually preserving the natural flow of um, the of the food chain. Ayun. So, it's, it has been 51 minutes now. And uh, that actually concludes uh, our, ano, our set of answers, responses for that uh, particular question. So I hope that you got something. Um, I hope na kahit pa paano meron kayong nakuha from watching this video, which is actually almost an hour long. Okay, so again, this is CJ, and this is the most natural video I have done for the Knowledge Catalog Education Solutions. See you next time.